Okay, so uh, my first question to you is, if you go back in time, you know, the first day of your work as an entrepreneur and to when you won the award for Entrepreneur of the Year, how has the journey been? And, you know, we've read a lot of books, we've listened to a lot of podcasts, but what does it take to be a successful entrepreneur? I think uh, <clears throat> just persistent and hard work, nothing else. It's, uh, I mean, it's, it's the simplest way to say it that uh, you will you will lose million of times, but you'll have to keep pushing, keep doing it. And if you really believe in what you the project you are in, uh, then you have to just keep pushing it. And uh, uh, it's not about blind belief. Also, you need to keep changing your um, approach, your uh, what's working, what's not working, uh, tweaking the goals a little bit. Uh, but the core vision should remain the same. It, it cannot keep changing overnight and you have to keep pushing it and you'll, you'll get there. Yeah. So uh, during your journey, as you said, that of course there are many times you will lose and you need to keep reinventing yourself. What have your failures, failures taught you? You know. I think the failures have taught us everything. <laughs> the success doesn't teach you anything. Success actually spoils you. Uh, the failures are the one which actually teaches you. <clears throat> so everything, I mean, starting from being careful about how you spend your money to how do you value every dollar that you spend how how should you conserve how, uh, how should you value your team uh, team actually is the most valuable thing in this whole scenario <clears throat> because team is what helps you build it so the stronger the team the more uh, connected you are with the team the more uh, like a family you are with the team the stronger the uh, thing is and as a company grows and you'll end up having a lot of employees obviously you can't um, make all of them your family but the core team that you've made your family they make them their family and then the ch chain moves right because you can't pra practically go and spend personal time uh, with all these guys but you spend it with uh, a handful of few who become your family and your core and then they spend more time with the others and that's how the hierarchy structure works and as long as the relationship is uh, i believe the business is quite personal in nature that's how it should be uh, people usually say business is business one of my co-founders says business is personal to me uh, the reason is because it's emotionally tied you are you are passionately driving it um, it's it's not a uh, traditional business uh, which people just do it for the sake of business where you put in money to get out money this is more about passion it's about looking at a vision looking at uh, a success doing something which others have not done in the past right and uh, you know how does <coughs> the winner of entrepreneur of the year and someone as successful as you think when taking harsh decisions during the current circumstances COVID, and a lot of startups have been affected by this so how is it that you think, because I'm sure a lot of startups and a lot of our audience would like to know that how do you think when taking harsh decisions? Uh, fortunately, so far we've not had to take any harsh decision. Yes. Which means we've not done any salary cuts, we've not uh, fired anybody, we've not uh, reduced uh, manpower strength because of uh, COVID. Because what I feel is a lot of companies have done this out of pure precaution or I would say overreaction uh, or uh, people who have the fear psychosis of a storm is coming so let's conserve more so like in uh, like government says don't hold food or things like that this is almost a similar reaction mm -hmm. um, but I think uh, you should be able to manage uh, currently our team is working uh, obviously the only change that we've done is we've become a, a high productivity company with zero tolerance when it says zero tolerance zero tolerance is towards negligence towards mistakes so what we've told them that in a normal day time normal scenario <coughs> you make mistakes we don't even look at it we just overlook it and just life goes on and you keep making mistakes and we let you keep making mistakes so that you learn more but that's a learning curve every learning curve has a time uh, we can give you the time, but right now we don't have the luxury of time. So uh, make less mistakes because the mistakes can cost us dearly in this stage. Once we get to a better settled scenario in future, then we can can go back to learning again, which is making mistakes again. 
till now for now hold on to making mistakes we let us hand hold you and move you faster so we have to pl play more front end leadership role now uh, than any time before uh, earlier we used to spend lesser time with team uh, lesser time in planning uh, because team was quite dependent and we wanted them to make mistakes so that they learn they move uh, they become more stronger but now we'll have to step in help bridge that gap for the time being so that less mistakes are made and then when things get back to some sense of normality they'll go back to being normal right 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 and moving to zinga tv as one of the largest ott from the time when people actually did not even know the term ott it was not coined and i remember yeah. that time people did not really have 3g phones or such um, comfortable internet connections so yeah. how was your experience it running it then so when we first launched it <coughs> yeah, as you said the ott word was not there uh, it was called mobile tv those days so during the life of zenga tv it has been called to three uh, kinds of uh, names uh, so it was called mobile tv then it was called digital video services then it was called uh, some used to get it confused with ip tv uh, and then it's eventually been called ott <clears throat> now those days the only advantage or why the very sole purpose of why we came into existence was because we could stream out a 2.5 g network and we could stream it seamlessly and we in fact uh, streamed uh, extremely popular content we streamed viacom we streamed ipl we streamed a lot of other sports events and other events uh, we streamed some of the top most uh, news channels uh, in the country today and that we stream even today uh, so the reason of our success was primarily because of technology because it could stream and millions of people could watch it on a 2.5g network today the advantage continues because we are still a high compression uh, content so the cost that a user pays for the data um, is almost one fifth of what it would pay for any other ott service in the market so if i am burning uh, 10 gb worth of data uh, for any other service in zenga's case it will be almost like 2 gb of data that's the difference right and uh, now to one digital how did the idea come come in shape you know how did the idea come and if you could just take our audience through the conceptualization stage the challenges you faced once you were building it so uh, when uh, after building zenga uh, what we realized is we zenga had the core technology uh, but as a service it continuously needs content and it needs fresh content new content all the varieties of content Uh, we were heavily dependent on tv uh, repurposed tv shows and tv content or movies or live tv channels these were the content that we were dependent on and um, i had this thought that we will need content made for internet made for our audience um, and that time nobody else was doing that so uh, me and my team always believe that if you want to do something which nobody else is willing to give you or is not producing do it yourself and we do that for technology we do that for content we do that for pretty much everything and eventually if somebody starts making it and is doing better than yours then stop making yours start sourcing from them because they are doing a better job so from that context itself i i used to uh, we used to hold uh, exclusive rights for viacom itens all content and gurpreet used to be the <coughs> uh, head of digital for them so we used to work closely and we connected somehow and we liked each other and so i pulled him out and we jointly together decided to build one digital which was supposed to do distribution supposed to do content creation aggregate production and so far we've done all of that plus and plus so we also have a largest artist network now in the market and we have a lot of other functions we've acquired companies under that uh, so it's become a large piece now and going forward what are your future plans with one digital well we just acquiring quite a few companies uh, under one digital uh, so to help uh, increase the potential revenue opportunities for our artists and few other functions uh, we are adding a um, lot of new ips now original ips we are producing new content distributing more so 
pretty much everything we're just adding more and more scale geographically physically size wise everything wise uh, that's, that's what we're doing currently that's great so one digital works with a lot of influencers <coughs> sort of apps and now with the covid 19 giving a push to ott have you recently noticed any change with working with influencers see all influencers have uh, stopped professional production because they can't do that right now mm -hmm. uh, so they are doing home production uh, our team uh, is working continuously with them on ideas and concepts so so the artist thinks of a new concept that can i do this now can i it's and all of them are absolutely innovative new uh, mind boggling new ideas and then our team the creative team actually sits <coughs> thrashes it out and sees fine tunes it and then we shoot with them and everybody shooting remotely being produced remotely everything is managed remotely uh, in current situation uh, but everybody is excited while uh, everybody is become more empathetic everybody is become more emotional everybody is also become more caring a uh, lot of our artists that we know are uh, making money and donating 100% of the money for charity so uh, emotionally they are uh, they have always been emotionally inclined but this is an extreme scenario now they are more they they are voicing out things which are important uh, so a lot of things are happening in this space so uh, structurally i would say <coughs> while uh one artist was let's say a comedy focused artist or a food focused artist every one of them has added an angle to emotion now because of the current situation and they're trying to do their best in best ways and what do artists do best is entertain you right and they're trying to keep you entertained in this um, stressful time uh, which is why you'll see tons of content is coming and tons of content are getting consumed also i don't think we've ever seen uh, the quantum of flood of videos on whatsapp like what we see now uh, everybody is pushing content to everybody just to keep everybody each other cheer cheered up uh, artist is the one who's creating it for them mm. true true so and you know this time a lot of traditional advertisements uh, who used to advertise <laughs> print or tv are moving to digital space so do you notice a uh, um, is there any challenge or other advertise advertisers now comfortable with the digital space or in the earlier days when you had started they were not really i spoke with a few uh, really long time back and they were not comfortable coming to digital space and advertising but now people are more open to it what are your thoughts on this i think um, this is the uh, this is the last call the last push it's it's almost like the last call before the train leaves or the last push before the train leaves if you miss it now this is the last bus you're missing mm -hmm. um so brands who have stuck to legacy system i would not call traditional i would call them legacy because these are legacy systems that they are stuck to every system has its own merit yes. but the point is um, you can't use it for everything for example a tv is a good branding campaign uh, opportunity but it's not targeted it's not uh, you can't expect sales conversions happening out of that you can't expect interactions happening out of that you can't ex it is almost more like a pat on your shoulder where you spend the money you you really don't know what to measure what to get uh, there is an assumption going on everywhere and you're patting your shoulder saying oh i am assuming that so many million people saw me and uh, but when you go back and map it to sales it's actually not happening so this is not a wake up call this is like a, a shutdown call saying that this is the this is this is the last call for you to get inside the door or the door is going to shut off so it's almost like that and uh, what is happening is a lot of companies adopted uh, 10 years back 15 years back some adopted 6 uh, years back uh, some adopted even 3 years back the lucky ones are actually the ones who adopted 5 years back because they didn't come into a and they also got to play around more maturely and uh, the market is more uh, ripe from their point of view and they are the top most spenders of the market with and they are also the highest value achievers out of this market but the ones who are left out and now thinking of changing because there was there is no literally no choice <clears throat> they'll take some time to adapt and they will need support help to adapt because they can't adapt on their own um and it uh, it is almost like spending in an unknown territory and because you are spending in an unknown territory 
uh, you're always holding your heart and hoping that my next step should not be in a ditch. Um, that fear will be there for some time. There's no choice. I mean, it's almost like you're being thrown into an ocean and you have to start learning how to swim now. Uh, but you will need support. I mean, if you take the right team support, right people support, I think it will work out well. Uh, but it's like uh, I would say that it is not about uh, things will go back to normal. Yeah. Things have changed forever and it's going to remain like this and only going to change further. It's not going to go back. Yes. So that's that difference. The faster you digest it, the better it is. Otherwise, so people, some people are still staying in illusion, um, almost like an ostrich, uh, uh, closing the eyes and waiting for the things to storm to pass. So this brings me to my last question. As we all agree that things that the world as we know has changed. So in this time, if someone is starting their business and wants to establish a brand, would you like to share some advice for them? What are the steps they need to keep in mind? So if you're starting any new business, uh, which is now or in the next six to eight months time, um, maybe up till May of next year, almost about a year from now, um, I think it has to be a really solid plan because an era like this uh, can be a boon or can be a disaster. If you're launching something which is not something which is important, not something which is critical in nature, not something which is a product that is in need, um, then I don't think this is the right time to launch. Don't even attempt it because uh, this is a time where uh, good to have, good to uh, wish list products are not the ones which are in need. Uh, what is important is, I'm not even saying essential, but it's way above essential, but critical products, important products, uh, important solutions. Uh, for example, if you're launching an online uh, education program, yes, why not? But are you already fully prepared or are you going to start developing content now? If you're going to start developing content now, then you're not going to uh, be either way successful because uh, you should have already got your content now, then it works. But if you are going to start making content, it will take you six, eight months time, so you're going to miss the bus. So. It's about right time, right uh, place. The right place is the whole world now. There's no geography limitation because the whole world is impacted equally. Uh, so this is one time where any solution can become a global solution, more, more or less. So for example, if you create a disinfection solution, you create a healthcare solution, any of these solutions are equally important in all the countries as it is in India. So a great time to create global products and be able to launch it. Uh, but everything has to be like a super fast track. You have to be working 48 hours a day to get things done. That's how fast you have to do. Right. So uh, that is it. Thank you very much for your time. I really appreciate you taking out time and speaking. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Bye-bye.